doing, guys? Um, life. It's not something that happens to you, it happens for you. Um, I've been thinking about this last week, actually, because the it sort of started off with some of the things that have been said in the past and something something come up recently. Um, it's like a friend of mine, he, he'll, he'll often say, it's easy for you. You know, at the end of the day, um, when a lot of people are out, like, party and drinking, whatever, I was studying. Um, at the end of the day, we're back in probably about 19, probably about 1990, 1991, um, I struggled to find work. You know, I was, just, you know, I hadn't long come out of school, um, did an electronics course, and basically couldn't get any work. And, you know, nobody wants, you know, young kids at that age. Um, but it it's where I got my um, foundations relating to managing my money and not getting in that same situation because I put myself through college, etc. Uh, financially, wasn't that well off at the time, but I learned from it. It's why when I was doing exhibition work, I seen that as a carpenter, you work to a point, then there's a point where um, they sort of lay you off and the guys come in and do the sound, the lighting, you know, electricians and electronics. So I then started doing that on top. So I'd then do the carpentry stuff and then into the, um, the fitting of the, the lighting rigs and putting sound systems in, computer systems, uh, PA systems, pretty much what anybody wanted. It's putting up the, back then it was the old plasma screens of a thousand pounds each. Sorry, 10,000 pounds each. Um, but the whole point is, is adapting to the environment, is realizing that if you want something to happen to you in a positive way, you have to drive it. Um, it's like moving to Spain or moving to the Philippines. Ultimately, I find, I mean, I remember the two, oh, what were the guys' names? I can't remember. There's, there's two guys that used to uh, come into a bar. Um, and they, they used to, Jerry, they were both called Jerry. One was a potato picker, the other one was a accountant. And they would say, don't worry about money. Money will sort itself out. And what they basically meant was, no matter what happens, you will find a way. You know, at the end of the day, your life will adjust to whatever. So there's no point in worrying about it because not everything is going to be there all the time. In the same way, when I joined a company called Purpose Built many years ago, um, I used to build timber frame houses. The, the work there... It was, it was good work. It's hard work, but at the same time, it was, I enjoyed working there. There's about 60, 60 carpenters, um, and we used to build all these flat pack houses. And day in, day out, hard work, but at the same time, it was one of those jobs where people had been there years. You know, some of those people had been there nearly 30 years. But then one day, the uh, managing director come down and sold us, told us he'd sold it to the... Um, competitor and that was another lesson learned that there is no such thing as loyalty from companies um, unless you're the person giving loyalty um, I know that sounds a bit over the top negative but the point being is for you to develop a career or whatever it's often a case of you have to develop it yourself um, when I was with Krillian for example there's a lot of good engineers, good um, operators that would never become even a supervisor because they were good at what they did and were penalized for it. Um, and I've, I've got to admit, I openly discuss with some of the guys, if you can't get it here, get it elsewhere. You know, the, this is, you've got to take the opportunities. You have one lifetime. And like I say, life is one of those things that doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. You have to embrace it, you have to make these changes, you have to make things happen. 
um, even here in Spain. You know, I've got something next Wednesday. Um, if that goes well, I may be in Sweden very soon. But April and the kids will still be here in Spain. Um, but I'll just commute. But ultimately, that opportunity wasn't even one I was looking for. I, I was just random. Well, I wasn't randomly. I was headhunted. Um, they they contacted me through LinkedIn and asked if I was interested. But a lot of that goes back to things like writing a good LinkedIn profile, putting the effort in there, going through other people's LinkedIn profiles and doing some comparisons. You know, people in the same industry, the same technology. Um, how do they do theirs? And then look at some of the people that deal with uh, PR and things. What do they do? What's slightly different? How do they word things? Um, what information can you relay that makes your resume interesting? And I know a lot of the people I know aren't even on LinkedIn. And a lot of people I know are currently now redundant um, from Carillion and haven't put the same sort of effort in. Myself, like I said, if I, you know, this job goes well one uh, Wednesday, um, I'll be up in Sweden. But was I looking for work? The answer's no. I'm, not, I'm quite happy ticking along, doing stuff from home. Um, and, you know, I'm home every day, spend time with the kids, time with April, and enjoying life, you know. But it's about doing the stuff that you want to achieve. And a lot of it is you have to set these goals in motion early on. You have to realize that... <coughs> this is why I sort of promote YouTube in some ways. That a lot of the problems people face these days is financial. And to break the burden of finance means getting debt free. To get debt free, you have to find other revenue streams. Um, because the best money makers are the ones that make money while you're in bed. You know, at the end of the day, although I make money on YouTube, I also have websites where I receive money on a daily basis um, for stuff I did five years ago. So that's the sort of thing I realize is if you put the effort in, then you'll get it. But it's not going to appear tomorrow. And this is where a lot of people go wrong. They think, I'll set up a YouTube channel. I'm going to make this money. Then the first month, no money, because you haven't had a 1,000 subscribers of that yet. But that's fine. That's fine. Because at the end of the day, it takes time. But don't think the stuff you did then is of no value. Because once you get to month two, month six, whatever, depends what niche you're in, and suddenly you can get monetized. You can then monetize the old videos as well. And if the subject's right and there's a good subject matter, you'll keep making revenue off those for the next 20 years. Um, and that's an important bit. You know, financial freedom is an important part of life. Um, I won't say it's the be all and end all, because one of the problems I got with the van runner, I did fix the van the other day, by the way. Um, but um, I've been talking with a car company, uh, one of the local dealerships, trying to buy a car. Um, one of the problems I have is they want pay slips. Well, I don't have pay slips. I work for me. Um, so I have no pay slips. And they won't let me pay in cash because of anti money laundering. <laughs> so it's a, <coughs> it's a funny one. Um, but. Uh, yeah, that's buying a brand new car off the showroom floor. But uh, um, but getting into that position is something I set up over time. If this work comes through in um, Sweden before I get the car sorted, I will be buying a better car. As simple as that, because the salary on there, because I can get wage slips as well, um, is, is pretty good. So... Like I said, you've got, to, you've got to embrace life. And I know a lot of people will put things up as barriers. And it, that gets back to the conversation where some, a friend of mine says, it's all right for you. But as I said, while he was out drinking, I was studying. I went to college um, studying things on the Internet. I mean, back then, you didn't have lynda.com. You didn't have um, Udemy and all these other ones where you can get... Uh, cheap or even free training, depending on where you go, um, to learn things. Computer coding, for example, you can get it online. 
it's free. You know, it's not difficult to find people that will help you. Um, like the English teaching, if you go into the ESL things and start chatting with people, a lot of people will send you this stuff for free. You know, at the end of the day, most people in these niches are positive people. Um, so I mentioned about the Philippines niche. See, the funny thing is in the Philippines niche, there's good, good, bad, and then there's what I call the women's sewing circle, uh, which are the ones that just rely on gossip. Um, I was talking to somebody two days ago because uh, he's, he's just going through a bit of a bad, bad time at the minute, and he brought up this British guy's name. He said, oh, Matt, this guy says that you, you're, um, you, you left because of death threats and... Uh, the, uh, you have NBI warrants and blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, when somebody says this nonsense, there's a very simple thing. Where's the warrants? Well, who's doing this? Because as soon as you do that, well, there's, there is nothing. It's just... It's a women's sewing circle. It, it's, it's to trump the next person. You know, at the end of the day, when somebody says, uh, um, somebody got hit by a car, and they, they might have just, like, hurt their elbow by the time it gets to the 20th person the guy was dying in a pool of blood when in reality it's just gossip because they've had to up up it every time they go um and this is why i don't really respond to the the idiots that spread these sort of rumors the first thing is why do you take that much interest in this stupid stuff in the first place second thing is as i've explained more than once i work for government contracts mainly um, also, if you understand how the Philippines works, you'll understand that you have to get MBI clearance um, if you've been there over a certain period of time. So, MBI clearance, I already have. I've got anti-terrorism clearance. I've got um, clearance in the UK f for no pending or prior offences. So, idiots. I'll go back to the Philippines when I when I'm good and ready. It's as simple as that. I've got the stuff I'm doing. Like I've said, April's mother's coming over first. Once that's done, I'll go over. But people sitting there with this stupid nonsense, my God, go out and get a hobby, even if it's knitting. I'm not sure where you get knitting gear in the Philippines. Certainly should get a life. As you can see here, I'm still suffering with the flu. But even that, I don't let it get me down. I'm still out and about, doing stuff, still doing videos, even though, obviously, I shouldn't be with my voice like this. But you should just embrace things, do stuff. You know, it's it's like now, the sun's shining, but it's cold outside. I've got the little heater on down here. Um, we're going out for lunch. Something so simple and trivial, but at the same time, it's like just doing something. Because I know some, you know, now the sun's back, I'm going to start venturing out. Same as my son wants to go cycling today, so we'll be out cycling, cycling Sundays. You've got to do stuff for yourself. And one of the things I do realize myself is sometimes you get into a rut. I mean, I, I do it sometimes. So sometimes I'll get into this routine of doing the stuff on the computer and not really doing stuff in the sense of going out or whatever. So when you realize you're doing that sort of stuff, start planning on breaking it and start doing other things that completely disrupt all that because a lot of time it's not healthy to be doing it um, because you get into, like I said, you end up in a rut doing the same thing over and over again and then you start putting yourself off going to the supermarket, going out for a drive. You know like when people sign up on a gym in January um, and by February they've lost interest in it because they haven't really had enough time to get those gains where you feel the, the change. Um, you've got to drive yourself. You've got to have that ambition, that dedication, um, discipline to make it happen. And this is what I'm saying. You can get more out of life if you want to. Completely up to you. Completely up to you. Nobody can do it for you. It's a bit like when people say, I want to win a lottery. You don't want to win the lottery. You just want to be rich. Let's just get straight to the crunch. You want to be rich. That's it. And then if you do that, instead of going, well, I'll get a lottery ticket every week because then um, I might get rich, you can focus on actually becoming rich. How do you do it? 
how am I going to change my life? How do I increase my income? What am I going to do that's going to be different tomorrow by doing changes today? And that's how you get to your goals. And getting rich isn't that impossible. You know, if you start changing the way you live financially, you can find that having no credit card debt, no debt whatsoever, probably adds at least 30% of your income into your pocket per year by doing it. Nothing more than having no debt. That puts you ahead of a lot of people already. But then if you started doing stuff like, let's say, YouTube videos, website on drones even, um, or even printers, printer drivers and fixing things, even like £20 a month, it doesn't sound a lot. But over time... If you get that up and running and you don't really need to manage it anymore, and you start doing something else that makes £10 a month, and then this one over here makes 50 and then this one makes 100 and then you start to see it all starting to come together. It's one nice little package, which is low maintenance, um, low amount of work, and you may even find the point where you can take on a virtual assistant to do most of it for you. So you're getting paid to do not a lot um but it all starts with today it starts with realizing this is your life enjoy it thanks for watching